for the last few decades, there has been an increasing prevalence of harmful cyanobacteria blooms in lakes in Wyoming and around the world. Cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, can produce toxins that are harmful or, in some cases, fatal to humans and animals. In partnership with the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality, Wyoming DEQ, we are conducting research that aims to find easier, more accurate, and cheaper ways to predict, monitor, and prevent these blooms in Wyoming water bodies. Utilizing the data given to us by DEQ, I am attempting to correlate biogeochemical differences over a period of time. I am attempting to identify key differences in nutrient fluctuation, as well as determining if levels of microcystins correlate with these fluctuations. I am currently working in our studio with Ella DeWolf in an attempt to visualize the data for you. So far, with just the temperatures, we have been able to see an upward correlation. If we are seeing higher frequency of blooms in Wyoming temperature, it may be playing a key role in bloom formation. This preliminary data may suggest extended warm periods, allowing for longer cyanobacterial growth could be a contributing factor to major bloom formations and will be a part of the larger picture we are working on forming by this project. It is known that there is an iron uptake regulator on the gene that expresses microcystin toxins in microcystis cyanobacteria. This iron uptake regulator shuts down the expression of toxins in the presence of iron but releases toxins when there's not enough iron in the bacteria's environment. We hypothesize that there must be a threshold concentration of iron that is needed to prevent the release of these toxins. We grew microcystis in five separate concentrations of iron broth solutions for 18 days. Then we measured the concentration of microcystins that were released into the media. We were able to measure the concentrations of microcystins released into the solution after the cells were able to grow in their differing concentrations of iron. Our preliminary findings show an overall trend that as iron concentrations in solution increase, microcystin toxin release decreases. We are currently analyzing the data before drawing further conclusions. In the upper right hand can be seen a microcystis culture under the microscope, which we use to determine the purity of the original cyanobacterial culture, as well as a stain of the same culture, which also helped to determine the purity of the microcystis culture. We are growing the cyanobacteria microcystis with agrobacterium, which we hypothesize will be able to compete with microcystis and slow or even prevent its growth. Agrobacterium is typically used to insert DNA sequences into other bacteria, but in this case, we are seeing if it is a growth competitor. For this experiment, we separated out 10 milliliters of the microcystis culture, which was cultured in a Bristol's broth, and placed them into sterile test tubes. Each tube was tested for cell concentrations using a salometer. This is a microscope capable of taking pictures of a slide and counting the number of cells present. The preliminary concentrations of the cells were quite low with an average of one cell per microliter. This was a concern for the future visualizations as a concentration of cells may become immeasurable. The cultures were then inoculated with a single cell culture of agrobacterium and were then allowed to grow together for one week. The cell cultures were obtained by streaking a freeze-down culture of the agrobacterium strains onto LB auger plates and allowed to grow to a stationary or latent phase 72 hours in an incubator. In the future, the cells will be counted again using the salometer to determine if the agrobacterium was able to outcompete the microcystis cultures. If these results are seen, this could be a potential basis for future eradication methods of the harmful blooms. 
you can see in the top right corner a picture that was taken by the salometer and highlighted in red is what a microcystis looks like under a microscope. Using current methods, the DEQ is only able to warn the public about a toxic bloom after the toxins are present in measurable levels. This means there is a risk that a lake can and would be open for recreation when toxic levels are dangerous. This research aims to identify any relationship between the toxin gene, MCYE gene count, and microcystin over time in order to determine if the mycy MCYE count could be used to predict harmful toxins. To accomplish this, we have taken daily samples for eight days from West Granite Springs Reservoir, which has an active cyanobacterial bloom, as well as from cultures grown from the lake's microbiota. We hypothesize that there is a relationship between MCYE count and future toxin levels. Currently available testing methods are also expensive and time consuming. For a related project aiming to find easier ways to estimate current toxin levels, we have taken weekly samples and water chemistry measurements from three lakes with active cyanobacteria blooms. We hypothesize that there will be correlations between water chemistry and current toxin levels. We have begun to measure the microcystin concentration in each sample using ELISA, a commonly used testing method for government agencies. We have found microcystins in some of the lake samples, but most had inconclusive results and will be remeasured. Next, we will be using qPCR to count the number of MCYE genes in each of our samples. We will compare all of our ELISA water chemistry and qPCR data to find any relationships that could estimate current toxin levels or predict future toxins.